I praise and thank God for this beautiful morning that God has given us to come in His presence before His precious word. For this morning's meditation, let's turn to Proverbs chapter 28 verses 17. A man that doeth violence to the blood of any person shall flee to the pit, let no man stay him. Here in the scripture, the Spirit of God is revealing to us the severity of the justice of God. The scripture or the nature of God is very clear. No room for any maneuvering with this judgment. A murderer should be put to death immediately. Capital punishment for murder of a human being is the nature of God's justice. It is necessary and there is nothing for man to debate concerning this mandate. Any view that is contrary to this judgment is rebellion against holy God. And it shows the hatred for the human life. In the eyes of God, the life of a human being is very precious. Man has been created in the image and likeness of God. He has not evolved from other animals. The blood of man is precious in the eyes of the Creator. It may not be precious before man, but we need to realize each soul is precious in the eyes of the Creator. The word pit that is used in the scripture refers to eternal punishment. No man should hinder or stop the murderer's death. When we study about the first murder on the face of the earth, we see how Abel's blood cried out from the ground to the Almighty Holy God in the first generation of the human family. Though Abel could not cry out physically, but his blood did it for him to the omniscient God. And we need to remember, Almighty God still hears the blood cry out from every murdered victim. God did not kill Cain. There are many reasons for that. First, there were very few people on this earth. And that doesn't mean that God was soft with Cain. The punishment that he received was worse than death. Cain himself says, my punishment is greater than I can bear. He was a tiller of the ground and the punishment that he was given was that his livelihood had been taken away from him. He feared death at the hands of another person. He had to live a life with unfruitful work and the guilt of having killed his own brother. And it was later when God made the Noahic covenant that murder became a capital crime. The death penalty was codified in the Mosaic law. Cain lived before the law was given, but he was given enough punishment. God has clearly declared, and surely your blood of your lives will I require. At the hand of every beast will I require it, and at the hand of man, at the hand of every man's brother will I require the life of man. Whoso sheddeth man's blood, by man shall his blood be shed. For in the image of God made he man. Genesis chapter 9 verses 5 and 6. When murder occurs, the murderer is supposed to be put to death. And if men will not do that, God will do it. In the Old Testament, if someone murdered a person willingly, and if he ran to God's altar, he was dragged away and bludgeoned to death with stones. In the Old Testament times, there were just two witnesses required. There were no delays, no prison term, no last meal, no phone calls, no mercy. When Ahab and Jezebel murdered Naboth, God read them their rights. We read about it in 1 Kings chapter 21, verses 21 to 24. The dogs ate Jezebel's and licked the blood of Ahab. In the New Testament, God has not altered the law. Christ himself said, I am not come to destroy the law or the prophets, but to fulfill. We are living in a world where evil is rampant. No place for justice and righteousness. 
Murderers are protected. Some of them have comfortable life within the prison, outside the prison, while innocent are being killed and tortured. We know what happened to the nation of Israel. They crucified Christ. They said, let his blood be on us and on our children. Rest is history for all of us to see. We are living in a time when so many innocent babies are being murdered in the womb. Will God be silent? Is He not watching? His law is still the same. How frightening it is. But if a murderer repents of his sins, God is merciful to forgive. The reason is because of the death of Christ. There are consequences that a person has to suffer. In close, we need to realize this whole world is guilty of murdering an innocent man. He was not man. He was God appearing before man as man lived a sinless life for 33 and a half years. The judge before whom he stood said that he is innocent. The disciple who sold him confessed that Christ is innocent. The thief on the cross said he is innocent. The soldier at the foot of the cross said he is innocent. Still, mankind crucified him. The world is guilty of his blood. But thank God for God's grace. If we accept that we are sinners and he died for our sins, heaven is ready to show its mercy. The price has been paid so that salvation can be offered as a gift to anyone who willingly accepts that he is a sinner. On the other hand, if we don't accept, our action says he died for his own sins. How serious that error is. May the Lord help each one of us to understand how precious life is and how precious salvation is. Let us value salvation and always remember that someone died in our place and let us live for his glory. Let us pray. Father, we praise you and thank you for this time that you have given us. And thank you for your precious word that teaches us about your holy nature and how precious each life is. Father, help us to value this precious salvation and help us to live for your glory. Thank you for the abundance of grace and your tender mercies. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' most holy name we pray. Amen. May God bless each one of us. Our Lord is coming very soon. Maranatha.